Now a story 80 years in the making. They were born and raised just a few miles apart and never knew one another. And now, exactly 80 years to the day, the world can learn of their heroics on the World War II battlefield. This was Jimmy Scalzo at a family gathering in Ravina in 1985. You got the bronze star there? Yeah. Uh -huh. well, we were pinned down with an ambush. And uh, we thought there was maybe an ambush in the 50s in the barn. Yeah. Until that day, he'd never spoken about the dramatic events that led to him receiving a bronze star. You know, the way they're believing that we had to get them out of there. Somebody had to get out and get some new apartments. He didn't say much that day, but offered just enough to make his nephew, Peter Klaus, and later his great nephew, Zach Klaus, wanting to learn more. So they set off on a research project that has taken them across the country, piecing together a puzzle of what took place on September 16th, 1944. Exactly 80 years later, they're eager to tell the story of what happened that day in rural Germany. What happened on September 16th, 1940? It's a very foggy day. Klaus and his son have traveled the country pouring over any evidence they can get their hands on, reading the accounts from the young soldiers and looking at hand-drawn maps the soldiers had created of the battle scene. Jimmy Scalzo was a combat engineer. A day earlier, his unit had been assigned to the 5th Armored Division. Scalzo and seven other guys were sent to scout an area where German soldiers had taken up position near a farmhouse. Scalzo is driving one of two Jeeps when they see a German soldier. And the captain, American captain, yelled to him in German, surrender. And he didn't surrender, he ran in the house. The captain got out of the Jeep, starts walking towards the second Jeep. Before he can say anything, they heard a ping and something hit the first Jeep. Nothing happened. Immediately, they heard another something launch. The Germans had fired a Panzerfaust, their version of a propelled grenade. It disabled and blew up the first Jeep. The shrapnel injured the driver of the first Jeep and the captain. And then everybody kind of jumped out of their Jeeps, including my uncle, and just tried to find cover. There was a ditch near the road. They jumped into the bleeder ditch. And according to accounts from soldiers who were there, the attack became more intense. The, the windows opened up and the Germans started firing. And the guy said, all hell broke loose. It's just like in the movies. The doors open and these machine guns started firing. And it was just complete chaos. There's fog, smoke, gunfire. The Germans captured four of the Americans. All were badly injured. Now, my uncle was in the bleeder ditch away from the Jeep. The only way for me to get out, anyone to get out, is get, to get to that second Jeep. And it's just sitting there on the road. So he had to act pretty quickly. So he made his way back to the Jeep, crawling. crawling. He got into the Jeep under gunfire. Scalzo managed to back the Jeep 300 yards to a place where three other soldiers could get in and race away to get help. He convinced officers that they needed to send tanks and riflemen right away. And those rescuing soldiers saved lives at the risk of losing their own. At least one of the rescuers was killed. And after years of research, the Klauses recently confirmed that his name was John Greschak. And out of the more than 16 million Americans who served in World War II, he happened to be from Watervliet, a rescuing hero born just miles from the hero who went to get help. Once Klaus learned that, he couldn't wait to share with the family of John Greschak, but finding them was almost impossible. He had just one option left. He drove to a home in Albany. I, mean, I got out of the car and I said, listen, this is going to sound odd. I said, but are you Donna? And did you have an uncle that uh, got killed in World War II? And did your family come from Waterville? And she said, yes, yes, and yes. It turns out Donna Kramer and her proud military family always wanted to know more about her uncle Johnny, knowing only that he was killed in World War II at just 19 years old. His purple heart and his name on a memorial is all they had until the Klauses came. Before Peter came to you, did you have any idea that your Uncle Johnny was a hero? No. I knew that my Uncle Johnny had died in the war and died young, but I had no idea the circumstances. It was very uplifting and 
very gratifying that somebody was looking into something like this and wanted to honor somebody that I didn't know, but throughout the process have gotten to know, which um, really warmed my heart. Donna says the Klaus's revelation has even brought her family closer together. It encouraged her to reconnect with her cousin Sherry, Johnny Greschak's great niece. It's quite a quite a thing to, uh, to to know all of this, and you know we would have never found any of this out on our own. This is this is really special. Two men from the same county lived 20 miles apart, didn't know each other, but when they had to act, they acted. My uncle got to tell his story to me. He got to come home and get married and have a family. John didn't. That's why I wanted to tell him. And it's a privilege for us to tell it. Excuse me. There was a ceremony today in Latham honoring Johnny Greschak exactly 80 years after he died while trying to save his fellow soldiers.